Molly Banneke, written by Alice McGill. Molly Banneke. On a cold gray morning in 1983, Molly Walsh sat on a stool, tugging at the udder of a cow. She was a dairy maid, and it was her duty to get up every morning around five o'clock and go to that same shed and milk that same cow. The man who owned the cow owned the cottage where she lived, the manor house and all the land around. He was Lord. After tugging, the milk squirted into the pail. When the pail was full, it was her duty to take it up the hill to the manor house and hand it to the scullery maid who handed it to the kitchen maid, who handed it to the cook. The jittery cow kept hooking its head. The week before, the cow had kicked over her pail of milk. The cook had warned Molly that she would be brought before the court if ever again she stood. That was the law. Molly's shawl was thin. Her hands were very cold, but at last the pail was full to the frothy brim. Suddenly Molly sneezed. The cow jumped over and the milk seeped into the damp ground. Before the sun set that day, Molly stood before the court. The usual penalty was death on the gallows, but no one who could read the Bible could be executed for stealing. So a Bible was offered to her. That too was the law. Molly's voice rang out clear and true. Her life was spared, but the justice sentenced Molly to seven years of bondage to be served in a colony across the ocean. Having no family, Molly Walsh, age 17, said goodbye to England and boarded. After she landed in the new world, Molly worked for a planter on the Eastern shore of Maryland. There, the cannons fired at daybreak, calling the servants to work. Tobacco crops, pressing the tiny brown seeds into the earth and picking the worms from the flowering stalks. Her calloused hands grew strong enough to control a team of oxen and to hold the plow steady. In her spare time, Molly sewed and nursed the sick for pay. After working, for the planter for seven years, Molly was free to go. As the law required, the farmer gave her an ox hitched to a cart, a plow, two hoes, a bag of tobacco seeds, a bag of corn, clothing, and a gun. Acres and acres of fertile land stretched ahead of her. Just before sunset that same day, Molly left the road and went four miles into the wilderness where she staked her claim. That a lone woman should stake land was unheard of, but Molly's new neighbors saw the way she jutted out her chin. They helped her build a one-room cabin. They helped her harvest and cure her first crop. They helped her cart the tobacco to the warehouse to sell. But Molly soon realized that the farm was too much for her to manage alone. One day, Molly read a posted announcement that a ship would be landing soon. Because she needed help, 
in working her land, she decided to watch the docking of this ship, a slave ship. She watched the men of Africa file by one after the other. She saw the misery, anger, and shame on their faces as they were forced to mount the auction block. Then Molly noticed a tall, a regal man who dared to look into the eyes of every bidder. Molly bought him and vowed to treat him well and set him free just as soon as her land was cleared. Molly talked to this man using her hands and arms to tell him of her homeland and of her years as an indentured servant. He smiled at the strange looking woman with sweet grass eyes and straw hair and skin the color of the underside of a melon. He told her his name, Banneke. Because he was not used to the climate, he was often sick with chills and fever. Still, Banneke would walk up and down the rows of tobacco, stopping to turn each leaf on a stalk as if reading a printed page. He showed Molly how to dig ditches to guide streams of water down the furrows. As the tobacco ripened in the fields, Molly and Banneke grew to love each other. She signed his freedom papers and a traveling minister performed their marriage. Though Molly had broken colonial law by marrying a black man, her neighbors came to accept this marriage and to respect Banneke. In times of drought, he shared his knowledge of irrigation and crop rotation, learned at an early age in his native country. Years passed, Molly and Banneke had four young daughters, a large house, and many outbuildings overlooked their hundred acres of land. Suddenly, a great sadness struck the family. Banneke died, and Molly was alone again. She drew her daughters closer to her and taught them how to work the land. In time, she had a grandson born of her eldest daughter, Mary, and her husband, Robert. In her Bible, Molly wrote her new grandson's name, Benjamin Banneker. She taught this young boy to read and write. She told him about his grandfather, a prince who was the son of a king in Africa, and about her days as a dairy maid across the ocean in England. Molly Banneke.